Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's jump into the Bitcoin charts. Thank you for liking the video as well. Uh, but yeah, we did actually get in a trade this morning. We put this for free in the Telegram and for free in the Patreon, as well as three other setups in the Patreon as well. Uh, this one did come through, as you can see here. Beautiful trade here. We got in around 64.5 as this structure looked like it was breaking. Okay, we were losing the moving averages. It just looked pretty bad across the board, okay? Uh, so my, <laughs> my Google Gemini is just going off in the corner. Amazing. Amazing, but uh, yeah, we can see here we got into this trade 260 bucks on the account uh, Kind of helping us out from the small losses We took over the weekend by having to get out of the trade from the Trump event. Okay, but yeah We did save a lot of money on that. So I'm not really I'm not really like Sad about those losses, right? Very, very small losses on the account. And we can see here for the on-chain, still looking pretty bad for the miners. Uh, one thing we will say as we get to hash ribbons in a minute, uh, it is actually looking a bit better on the hash ribbons, raw hash rate. Um, obviously, this is delayed a day, so I imagine tomorrow this will be going up again, which is a bullish sign, okay? Uh, neutral here on the macro index. We talked about this yesterday if you watched the video for that long. But uh, yeah, we can see, um, yeah, the, the last update was at 60,700, and that is still in a neutral stance, an orange stance. Uh, if we're looking at this as well, a liquidation heat map, we've had this glooming liquidation here um, of 42 million uh, as we have been running up here. And as this volume died off, uh, I'll explain why I got into this short in a minute, right? But um, yeah, I mean, this was a, a perfect target to be aiming for, and we've had a bounce since. Uh, I do think there's a chance we do go lower today. I do think we can fill this CME gap at 60,000, so I am still looking for a potential short entry. But if we are looking at the ETF side of things, institutions are just hammering in orders. We're talking about 300 million, okay, on the, uh, on the 12th, okay, and then on the 15th, we saw another 300 million, okay? So it's been pretty bullish days across the board here for institutions swiping this up. Germany selling at 54K or something, crazy. <laughs> they must be kicking themselves if they just held for a couple weeks. Uh, they would have made serious bank there. But um, yeah, fear and greed index as well. A little new addition here to the channel we can see sitting around 65. That's actually pretty high on the scale, which does kind of indicate a bit more of a bearish sentiment here. So perhaps a pullback last week it was maximum fear of course because we were under 60k uh, but yeah obviously since the event over the weekend we've had massive pumps as people believe that the, uh, the election results will be changing now or harder to rig or whatever right <laughs> but uh, if we do go over to trading view here I do just want to highlight why I got into this trade so uh, first of all we had this four hour volume weighted ATR ban we were talking about this yesterday this was the area we were expecting momentum to die off we, were, we weren't we were saying we're not going to blindly short into it in case we get something like this but uh, if it looks kind of like it's curling over around that area okay this little pale line here uh, then we were aiming for a short there and that did happen we did break the structure we did get in the short we did get over the 15 minute volume weighted ATR band and we bang that bad boy in I was debating actually closing this trade uh, at this 21 EMA on the one hour okay but I held it out for a little bit longer here uh, and yeah it turned out to be a good move we got out of the price action channel and the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band we are literally just hitting this uh, 7 SMA on the hourly right now and you can see this is quite a crucial uh, quite a crucial moving average for Bitcoin generally. Okay, if we are kind of pumping up, we're pumping up off of it, we're bouncing off of it. This is the thing we need to be watching, right? So uh, if we are going to get a wave down here, another wave down, then uh, yeah, I mean, bouncing down from here does make a fair bit of sense. I'm not going to be shorting into that just yet, but uh, potentially if we do get up into this area again here and we make a lower high and we curl off again, essentially just coming off the 15 minute and the four hour again, right? So something along the lines of this then whenever some microstructure breaks I'll probably look for another short down again and I, I believe this short potentially could lead us down to fill the CME gap which is uh, just looming down here so if we do just get rid of everything here I do just want to show you we're kind of done with the volume weighted ATR bands here uh, but we do actually have this 15 minute at 61.7 so uh, yeah that's an interesting one as well usually we like to bounce on that as well so uh, yeah this could be a key area to be watching for a short actually before I do get rid of it if we lose this 15 minute volume weighted ATR band it was kind 
kind of hidden by everything, right? But <laughs> 15 minute volume weighted ATR ban, uh, we would probably aim for a short here down to fill this CME gap at 60K. And you can see another 2% trade potentially there. So uh, as of right now, we are just kind of watching this, letting it bounce uh, after this like, small downwards wave. Uh, obviously, it's a bit more bullish now because these institutions are just hammering in money. But uh, what I will say is we have to be prepared for this CME gap to be filled. CME gaps do get filled like 100% of the time. It's ridiculously, it's ridiculous how much they get filled, right? So in the next week as well, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, 60K is probably the target here. We are not short right now, but I will be looking for a short uh, somewhere around this kind of 61.5 area for sure, okay? Uh, and besides that, if we do get rid of the uh, volumated ATR band, I do just wanna show you this gap a little bit more in a clean fashion, right? So this is where CME closed on Friday. This is where CME opened on Monday. And this is probably one of the biggest CME gaps we've had uh, in many, many years here. So yeah, 4% coming through there. And what we will say, maybe not many years, I think there was one this year that was around three or 4%, I can't remember here. But um, yeah, we're looking to get to 60K is the short story there. If we are looking at open interest, I know this looks super busy, but this is just liquidation levels um, kind of brought in by open interest green is 25x leverage okay so 25x leverage liquidation levels are, is green okay and then um the blue is 10x liquidation levels and you can see we do like to just go and target those like bitcoin is just drawn to these like a magnet it's ridiculous okay uh, and it's not like they're just appearing and then we go to them right it's uh, these things can be around for a while right these things can be around for a while um and they usually appear when open interest is at a high point where we get a big move uh or something like that, right? If we are looking at open interest just in general, we can see it has come down quite a bit here. I, I prefer this uh, a little bit more like this, actually. So let's just do it like this, right? So yeah, some of my insider guys were saying, yeah, it, it does make sense that we get this downwards wave here with open interest uh, coming up so much. Yeah, as everyone gets bullish after this event. I mean, this is a ridiculously <laughs> steep upwards curve here. Even if like, I could zoom this out so much, it's still super steep, right? Uh, so we are looking at this and we're saying, okay, uh, some spillover is expected. If it is, if it is going to be a market flip where we do just bang it from here, that's absolutely fine. All we're going to do is wait for this high to break and then bang it in, uh, aiming for this next liquidation level at 66.2, right? Uh, targeting these is super profitable. I've back tested this a lot here and you can see, right, once we hit one, okay, you wait for the low to break and you aim for the next one. Not the best example because these are so close, but yeah, low to break here, aim for the next one, okay? Low to break here, aim for the next one. So uh, yeah, this is essentially what we're gonna be doing here. If we break this high, we're gonna be banging it all the way up to 66K, ideally, anyway. Uh, if we don't, and we want to come down, then we do have this short that we were targeting back to the CME close anyway. Uh, again, that's around 60K around this area. And retesting this trend line after breaking out this pattern does make a little bit of sense anyway, right? So yeah, ideally we can come down here. Uh, if it is going to be bullish, which is great for everyone, right? Um, coming down here and testing this first is, is fantastic. If we can fill this CME gap, uh, it removes a lot of the bearish pressure in the market uh, because everyone's going to be expecting that CME gap to be filled, right? So we want this to be filled as soon as possible. And then if we want to go bullish from there, fantastic stuff, okay? If we do get lower than that, and if this is just going to be uh, one of these scenarios where we just get obliterated, uh, you guys know the drill. We're going to be looking for this kind of area to break so this trend line super important here uh, if this breaks then uh, yeah we'll be looking for about 57 four downwards uh, and potentially um, just finishing off that measure move that we were talking about from this giant pattern that was initiated, right? Uh, so maybe the market makers want to bring it down there. But uh, yeah, I mean, right now, this could be a macro flip generally. Um, it's, it's not confirmed yet, though. I want to be clear with that. Do not just bang in your bags, okay? Uh, this news is very different to normal news, okay? It's not like some Mount Gox or it's not like um, anything like that, Germany, uh, stuff like this. Uh, this is uh, a global financial event. This is something Thing that's huge okay it will affect everything um and people are saying that hey um your boy with the blonde hair is probably getting elected so yeah they, they expect the markets to pump and he has publicly backed bitcoin as well so uh yeah i mean it does make sense here for, for this bullish reaction, but some kind of pullback here to kind of uh, fill that CME gap, get back to 60K, retest these levels, and then bouncing up from there, then we can start eyeing up a potential parabolic run, okay? Uh, very interesting dynamics here, because I imagine a lot of the institutions, hedge funds, stuff like that, uh, will be taking this news and saying, hey, um, 
Like, it's it's a weird one, right? Because the people that are inside, if you do believe um, that it was planned, right? A lot of this, the, the thing was planned, right? I don't want to get too algoed <laughs> by YouTube, right? But uh, if, if you believe that they planned this and it was an inside thing, right, then... Yeah, a lot of these institutions that were on the inside of that decision would have been short, okay? Uh, and then when they missed, and Mr. Mr. Man, his ear comes off, right? Uh, when they missed, <laughs> then yeah, I mean, it's, it's something where a lot of these people are going to be underwater. The ones that aren't insiders uh, will have taken advantage of that and then banged it up from there. But the insiders are actually getting destroyed right now by this uh, this thing. So uh, potentially here, they were aiming for the Black Swan event. We did talk about this last week. We said Bezos sold a lot of his shares, hundreds of millions of his shares, okay? Uh, which is uh, a sign, because we saw Bill Gates do this around COVID, right? It's a sign that that he knew uh, that there was something about to happen and if 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 what they planned had happened then the markets would have tanked of course everything would have tanked uh, so maybe they were planning for that and to buy back lower this is just kind of uh, what's going on in my head right now uh, and yeah the markets are just reacting to that accordingly saying okay well if it was planned which it probably was then uh, yeah they failed and he probably gets elected and yes uh, the markets will pump because of that so what we will say here is, I'm sorry if that was a bit cryptic and you don't understand it, but I have to be careful how I kind of word this stuff, right? Uh, but yeah, if the market wants to pump up here and it does just bang it, then uh, we, we could be talking about a huge, huge trade towards the upside uh, once we break this all-time high around 74k, banging it up here for 11% up to 80. Uh, and then from there, it's just a moonshot, okay? But um, ideally... Ideally, we come down and test this first so it's not like a looming shadow over us, right? Uh, so, yeah, we'll be watching this intently. That's pretty much the plan right here. What are we, 11 minutes in? Um, yeah, I don't really have too much else to talk about there. Um, let me just see. Yeah, no, we've covered everything. We've covered everything. So, yeah, have a fantastic day, guys. Uh, I wish you the best out there. Trade safe. Be careful. It's a dangerous time to be alive, okay? It's a dangerous time. Um, don't just stay indoors, of course, but uh, make sure you're making the most of life here because, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty bleak. <laughs> it's looking pretty bleak for humanity here. Uh, if you are feeling a bit depressed about humanity, check out the Tesla, block, the Tesla bot, guys. They're making serious progress with that thing. Um, yeah, I want, what, $15,000 for a Tesla bot? Of course, yeah, I'll open a, I want to open a little a takeaway shop called Hammy's Wraps, right, where we make a little wraps, and I just get Tesla bots working on it all the time. I have five Tesla bots going, probably the worst use case you can have for a Tesla bot. <laughs> it's probably way more profitable, but um, yeah, I would like, I would like to have that. that that's one of my uh, little small dreams coming through. I could probably do it now, to be honest. It's just, I don't want staff. I don't want staff. I, don't, I, I hate managing staff. It's my, it's my biggest pet peeve, uh, but yeah, that's going to be it from me. Have a fantastic one. Oh, no, actually, actually. Actually, I forgot to tell you why I got into this trade. Oh, I did tell you a little bit why I got into this trade, but the other bit was because volume uh, had started decreasing here, right? And that was the other reason. Uh, besides that, yeah, I'm going to end it here. Peace. Goodbye. Thank you for liking the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think is going to happen with the markets here based on the most recent news this weekend. Cheers.